Hello, this is Sam Wong. Happy Saturday, everyone. Hope you're enjoying your weekends. Um, just time again to talk about the market and uh, give you some recap of what's going on. And this time, I want to start a little bit different, talking about one of the favorite stocks that somebody loves it and somebody hates it, <laughs> which is Tesla. So um, just to indicate in that, if you look at a month performance, uh, it's actually up 4% of Tesla which actually one of the drivers as well on the on the Nasdaq, you know, to holding holding the floor. Of, you know, if you know the major, uh, in, you know, Nasdaq, the major indices of the of major stocks that actually driving it. If it's go up on the then that that have a significant presence. And Tesla is one of the you know drivers um, such that you know. And then um, you know, uh, comparatively speaking, see, I don't know what's wrong with the Yahoo Finance tool. So um, and um, I don't know I, how to complain or give them let them know that because I tried a couple of months already, a um, couple of times already that you know they were I supposed to have a tool to allow you to compare so I can put everything that uh, other um, EV stock in this case into one one slide to illustrate to you how things were performed but. Um, yeah, apparently it didn't work. So, <laughs> so I have to split the slide into different, um, you know, different, different showing you. Uh, in the XPEV, which is same pain, which is one of the Chinese EV that I told you compared to Neo NIO and, uh, uh, which is pretty strong in BYDLF. Um, you can see that, um, for the one month comparison is, is down 4%, but for the week is actually up. Um, this one, you know, if you compare, you know, 6%. 4% up Tesla and 4% down in XPV for the month com monthly comparison is kind of interesting, right? But uh, again, for the for EV space, uh, Lucid, Lucid have gone up since the good announcement as well for the past month uh, that they are building some, some you know, vehicle. So uh, sometimes you just have a look at this and the way I look at it is, if you look at history of XPEV and uh, Tesla, Tesla have a good announcement early driving them doing up with a delivery strong in China uh, despite the pandemic. So uh, it, gave, it gave you a story why they're going back up. And bear in mind that Tesla at one point was $900 when they first entering the tax. Uh, the day they entered into Nasdaq was up from 500 plus going up to 700 and eventually hitting the record high at 900 900 dollars then it started to slip back and you can tell here is the big comparison so for those who actually were buying tesla lucky enough for 300 plus um or 400 dollars let's say you hold on with it for a year you actually have double your in your profit so that's why it depends on your um preference investor preference some people short term some people more mid term and long term uh you may make money or not and actually losing money even though the picture showing you that hey it is going up to stock right so um something i want to be really clear clear about when I'm presenting these data and what's going on with the market because I know some people will complain sometimes saying hey you say this is great but I'm losing money and then yet some people actually will be really profit from what I'm trying to you know uh, providing the insights and the directions of the market and and obviously not everything right as future is not pre sometimes it's not predictable the way you are and there's always some interesting news coming up that's my disclaimer today that telling you so that you know a lot of time you know if you want to give me uh you know support and uh, donation appreciate it and some people i know that you know they they hear what i said and it was wrong they didn't make money they were a little bit upset because you know, just like a uh, claimer, right? Not everybody made money because just watching his show. Um, you got to be very careful about that. And and again, um, there's always risk associated with, you know, the action you make. It also, the market fluctuate, and especially what I mean by vo high volatility is during the day, you can see the intraday was up at the end of the day when they closed the market actually going down. So your stock is doing a yo-yo ball and you really unless you could watch it as a day trader that's what people day trader do you know um a lot of data they probably have programs to help them to set things up in the, in, in the system also will buy and sell for them but that's just the way how things operate you know because you can't really watching so closely every day in the market right i mean you know and you could just miss the high point because you went to the restroom right that's how 
quickly the market moving, especially in the volatility market. So, and then the other point was NIO. I mean, for the week, uh, five days when um, it got upgraded uh, by one of the analysts, it's actually gone up. Again, I'm showing you a one month perspective. It's down. Because overall for the month, the market actually done, if you look at the index for the month, number one, and then if you look at the EV market as a whole for the month, it's done. So it wasn't really surprising that, but but the, the storytelling is this, right? Because of the month had been going down, and relatively speaking, you could have done, done 7%. You really have some space, right? Because it depends on your volume, how much you buy as well. These companies are going to announce earnings, and I think their earnings going to be good. I mean, they may still lose in money. Remember, these growth stock EV have never made money, but they but they are manufacturing. Manufacturing all about scalability, and the target was year of 2025 to produce enough to serve the market. So um, as sounds they've shown the encouraging news and things were really in progress and on track or maybe even exceed expectation of how much they're producing you despite still a small numbers in challenging and facing the shortage of chips is actually will help them the market will react positively but again it's just short term so with the you know with the yield curve also gone up then you really give them a lot of more pressure of borrowing money and these companies, since they're not making money, they actually burning cash every day. So something to bear in mind. And the other one I would recommend, which wasn't on my previous uh, broadcasting, was uh, HYLN. This stock, you guys can take a look at it. The 52 weeks high or the higher points were $52. The lowest point, I believe, is $5. Right now, it's around 7 lish. Um, I have a lot in you know, I, I bought quite a bit on $8 to average out the time that I bought a lot higher. But right now, I think um, this stock is still on track. They are building a headquarter in Austin. So something to think about in around this uh, EV space. Okay, and again, Biden still working on the, you know, 3 trillion, 3.5 trillion now probably downsized to about 2 million. And, you know, I think, again, you hear my broadcast last week, I think it's probably landed on 1.6 trillion to 1.8 trillion, which is more than what was originally asked, but less than 3.5 million target, definitely. It's still a win, right? Um, you know how it is, right? You always want to ask your mom money if you want to go and pick numbers first and you scale it down and you know your original target. So if you are really higher than the original target, you know, you're still actually a winner. Right? You call yourself your actual winner statistically when you're playing this negotiation game. So just something to bear in mind. And then um, the other thing before I talk about a recap, just showing you a, a, what um, how you look on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So for the month, uh, you actually lost about 0.38%. That's very significant because I think it was slowly climbing up, you know, for uh, for Dow Jones right now. Uh, and um, if you look at the six months perspective, however, it was still up about 2.8%. And looking at this graph, um, so it, you know, if you don't have to look at the technical piece, which you probably have to do with 50 days average. And I didn't do it roughly, but I know kind of where it was. So you were still going to have a possibility to up another 200 points of that, which could be happening Monday. Monday, when the long farm payroll number didn't come as well as anticipated, but then the Chinese market will open again, and, and we'll see the momentum in the Asian market first. Uh, if it's going up, um, then potentially, you know, uh, Dow can easily make another 200 points, because because this is showing you, depending on which picture you're looking at, how you stand, and you can clearly see in that in a one month is already climbed back up the Dow from the from the from the from the V shape that you know I always talk about, right? So this picture may likely tell you, hey, it is this number may maybe around in the right range before you gone down a crash. But if you look at <laughs> a six month landscape though, um, I would say there's still some other room, you know, another 250, we hit a 3,500, uh, 35, yeah, 35,000 before, you know, you really slip it down. So, but a lot of time right now is not less than microeconomic factors driving it anymore, but the macroeconomic factors, which will touch base as well as I go over recap, uh, what was the ma major drivers on the next week for an outlook on even the rest of this month really, right? Because again, remember October is the month that has to crash, 
but it's also historically you can argue was also the month that were performing pretty well for the quarterly earnings as well. So it depends which year you pick. It depends on which month you you know which year and the, um, on the period you talk about the slate of the story actually the twofold. Some of them. You know, uh, an analyst that I love that I listen to his broadcast. He's saying October is a very strong month. Don't worry. Well, versus the market keeps saying, "Hey, it is it is going to crash? It's going to crash, right?" So after October, or maybe we have to see November. It will be the testimony to see how how is doing it performing this year. Maybe it's another exceptional year. Again, last year, fund manager was saying eighty percent return. Um, I I was told by a friend who would go to um, they got call from the fund managing couple of fund managing company because she had money and she told me and then I obviously showed him some statistic eighty percent return last year was a really exceptional year this year maybe landed to twenty five to thirty depending well your market doesn't crash depending which fund funds you're talking about right so. I did really make eighty percent last year, but but I did make a pretty good number as well. Just that you know, um. So here's what happened. Uh, starting with Monday, and global stock fell Monday after a trading call for Chinese property giant Evergreen Worry Investor, and which is still going on. But right now, I think they have at least generated some cash to work on what they have been completed, and also still waiting for the direction of Chinese government. Um, while oil prices wobble as investor brace on medium major oil. Producer late in the day. In Asia, shares in Hong Kong hence in the same by two point four percent, and Tokyo Nikkei fell three percent after Fumio Kishida was voted in the Japan's new prime minister. Um, so that apparently meaning is bad news. But then of course you rebound later of the week. So these type of news is always create sensitivity and 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 possibility of making money in in a short time thing because it was crash and then you rebound in you know the Japanese stock rebound later of a week. Chinese media reported that Hong Kong listed real estate company Hobson Development has agreed to buy fifty one percent Evergreen's public service business for more than five billion dollars. Well, how does that work? How does the money go? How does the stock go in there in Hong Kong? Stock that now how how um. What's gonna happen? It's still unknown, so we'll probably find out as as this continue talk going on. And hopefully, it'll be positive. But at least it shades some light right now. Uh, you know, light of a tunnel to to hope things are not as bad as what the what the people said or market anticipate. On the U.S. side, there on Friday, show core inflation climb. Three point six percent in August year on year is biggest rise in three decades. Moreover, ten year Treasury yield hit one point five eight percent Tuesday, Saturday, and one point four nine percent month end, a fourteen point two percent acceleration for the month. Tuesday, Tesla stock rose two point eight percent after the electric car maker recorded a seventy three percent jump in deliveries in the third quarter, but pulled back later on day, still ended at point eight one percent higher. And you see the graph that I show you. Uh, for the month, it was up four percent. For the week, I think is um, well, for the week, uh, I don't have the picture, so you may have to look, uh, look at it. I don't want to say it wrong, uh, but definitely the market have driving it. Um, you know, with the good news that actually was climb up. Um, you know, for 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 the day when the announcement came out, um, in uh, in S and P. The S and P five hundred though fell one point three percent. Dow Jones Industrial Average slipped point nine percent, three hundred thirty two points. The last just on two point one percent. Facebook fell five percent along with Twitter and Snap. S N A P fell more than five percent. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet fell more than two percent. Three M company stock fell one point seven percent on back of federal jury awarding an Army veteran. 8.2 million. Healthcare also contributed to see a wet on Wall Street, especially Moderna. Also, if you watch Moderna with the news of um, the the pill coming up with Merck, it will actually have keep going down. And I honestly thinking, you know what? From I don't even know if the stock was six dollars to start at, and then start to get attention at the time. I watch on it. It's really forty dollars last year Moderna. Um, you jump up to hundred dollars with the range. I made some money with around sixty dollar. Timeline when I bought and I sold around seventy bucks, you know, which is because I I don't know much at that time about this uh, vaccine, and um, actually proved it very good. And then you you know really injected a lot with the world population. However, I mean 
you know, you've gone up to $500, it's kind of a little ridiculous. So, um, you know, now I, I think you, you know, in my opinion, I think it's just like Zoom, you know, eventually we'll just set it back down to what the market believe as a fair market value, which could be, I don't know, maybe down in a hundred dollars. I mean, I didn't do the valuation for the stock, so I didn't really want to say that. But you normally, if you've seen it in the past, it's not surprising from a 52 week highs, get a 50%, 60% discount, and then the stock will stay around that range, right? Just to give you an idea. Wednesday market remained as volatile. There were times lower than previous day, but end up higher for all three major index. The lingering worries about supply chain bottleneck that have many businesses unable to obtain the product in a timely fashion as yield could remain around the level of 1.5%. Moderna and Jensen and Johnson were ready for the approval for a same boost shot. So they finally came to play that they now they have the Push out after price has announced this. But again, there's still some resistance around these vaccine for the third shot. So you can see price of price have been really under pressure. Um, you know, it was the day announcing that you jack it up to $51 and now it's go all the way back down to $42. Uh, Global stock rose on Thursday after progress in top between lawmakers and the U.S. debt ceiling helped improve risk sentiment. This means President Joe Biden, Congressional Democrat, will be able to finish the fiscal spending package of between $1.92 trillion to $2 trillion and include a further increase in the borrowing movement. Well, we don't quite know that yet, so we we'll still have to look, but I'm not worried too much about the ceiling personally. Hong Kong's benchmark index rally strongly up 3% after report that the government plans to build 900000 New home contribute to strong Wally. Bitcoin 34% Wally this past week has allowed it to reclaim a 1 trillion market cap for the first time since May 10, just to give you the figures about Bitcoin, what's going on. And it did go back and rebound into $55,000 now in the latest update. The Friday futures opened with positive but slipped back end of the day. New share jump after Goldman Sachs boost the even market rating to buy. I think that's actually Thursday news. Um, Silicon stock, which moved in tandem with the economy, fare better as energy and financial push higher. Uh, Cincinnati Financial, CIF, Ben on New York, Mellon, BK, and State Street Corp, STT, were among the biggest win gainers in the sector. non farm payroll increased 194,000 last month after an upward revised 366,000 gain in August and compared to the census of 500,000. A Labor Department report show Friday. So again, the media explained it, and you heard it that saying that, hey, it's because the labor was uh, because of Delta variant, so people were not you know, still worry and not going out and do the job or whatever, right? And then they and then they were saying, well, because the government giving aim, so then they have a choice, right? But you proved it that they're wrong, right? Because now, hey, the market start the labor shortage is still there. So my opinion, if you ask me, my take is because of the prices, you know, if you're going to get one bucks and two bucks increase and just hope the labor will come back. With the inflation that you're seeing going out of on the market that you actually try to get, you know, for all the consumer goods that have gone up. I don't know about real estate if you sign a rental, is actually the price has gone up or not. I know per if you buy real estate definitely have gone up already twenty twenty to twenty five percent this year already, at least for Houston. So uh so this gives you a figure that, hey, your people want to come back, right? Again, there's still a lot of people actually looking for jobs, but the pay doesn't make any sense. If somebody, you know, simple figures, right? Just the mentality. If somebody used to make, I don't want to say too high figures, just to be fair, right? $50 an hour, and then now you cut, they say $40 an hour. Same thing, you work or not. That 25% pay cut right away with the inflation 20%, because this five. 5% or 3.84% year to year comparison is not accurate because 3.84% comparison is last year during pandemic when people don't go and buy anything. There's no inflation, actually deflation last year. If you look at poor back to the previous year, 20, you know, 20, 2019, <laughs> then you actually will see, I think, 5 plus percent inflation. But that's actually not everything either, right? Because so. So the argument was some of them actually going down and the oil price definitely now you go to the gas station. Um, if you compare 2019, it's, it's still pretty high, like probably 50% more higher, you know, if not higher than that. So so then, you know, people, when, all I'm trying to say is people are not stupid, right? It, the media can say that, but you go and as an intelligent investor, 
of the stock market as intelligent consumers, you just have to digest the information and validate it and ask, you know, right or wrong, right? Is this a true statement or not, right? And in particular, in what applicable to you as a consumer and in the area you where you where you live, right? So just just a disclaimer there, because people may disagree with what I said because it depends on where you live, right? <laughs> Some so, but the overall market. The way maybe the picture together together with the pieces that you have, just there's some disconnect in my opinion. Some analysts interpret that, that the job figures risk not satisfy Fed through research substantial further progress criteria for labor market improvement, indicating the central bank could delay its plan to begin tabling asset purchase by yen. So this is again very interesting. People, you know, policymakers always say things kind of vague. Right, so they would not define thing, but a very high level to a point that, you know, people like you and me, which is real people, may not understand what that means. Right, so uh, so the people I heard two four is, hey, they think the table is still gonna happen in November. Some people, you know, some article actually said no because now you didn't meet the criteria of the job, the payroll. I mean, they, you know, because it's not sustainable on the September market. They're showing a weaker market than expected. Well, who knows what Powell was thinking? So we need to ask Powell, right? And Marcus was up with the news, but possible profit taking in ten year, Treasury yield curve again rose one point six percent. So that's why um you know highest in June. That's why you see the market actually was up in Friday and slipped back. And actually, um Dow Jones and S and P five hundred were very slightly lower with uh point five one percent lower for Nasdaq. We're seeing just just probably had nothing to do with the stock market, but just more info. Yes, we're seeing men they put into place by employer and government in state, including California and New York, in recent week. Just just want to give people a more understanding about what's going on in the world. WTI oil price break eighty dollars for first time since twenty fourteen. That's what it means seven years high. With Bitcoin continue to rise over fifty five thousand dollars, and that's kind of wrap up the week. Volatility. Pressure the S&P 500 gain for a year, which fell from nearly 21% of September 2nd to 14.7% at the end of the month. The bot benchmark had recorded with a record close and 52-week high on September 2nd, then fell back from there. Dow Jones experienced four days during which daily gains and loss amounted to 500 points or more. But just like I said, you, for those who hear my video last week, it dropped 500 points, but you rebound, right? So it wasn't really people see. The market is not crashed because it, it had the momentum of rebounding by the dip. A variety of factors may trigger the market pull back further, but that uh, Delta variant, computer chip shortage, other companies made outside the United States have been very tight as the virus hit workforce in Asia and elsewhere. Um, well, that's actually a little better now as opposed to, but then with the power outages phasing, that could be a different story. Inflation, where is about the central bank will start to slow stimulus effort and raise interest rate, geopolitical risks and oil price pressures, global power shortage remains as a concern. Sign of emergency measure deal with a looming energy crisis continue to spread across the economy. The government ordered local coal miners to increase production capacity by 70 million tons a year in the development. The market can be an exceptional volatile at the month move forwards, right? So if you ask me, okay, I hear all this stuff, what that means? How does the market look? Well, it is still going to be very volatile. The mix and news of non farm payroll. Worse than consensus by employment rate at 4.8 percent with a higher price set to job added. That was a mixed message. Very hard to tell if it's tapering or delay or not. I can't tell you that. <laughs> I do not see the risk of debt ceiling, like I told you earlier, and we have been um, seen before. Government needs to show that they are working hard, right? So these people get together and talk for days, and then you vote for them. So, so you end up always reaching agreement, right? I mean, when you look at the stimulus, right? In U.S., you know, you know, whoever president it, it doesn't matter. Well, at the end of the day, you still get the stimulus, right? But how long it takes? That's the question, right? And um and just like the transition, the word transitionary, what does that mean, right? What may be concerning is continued shortage of chips, experience, expensive cost of transportation, the cargo remains pretty expensive as of this point. Surge price of power as this thirty five percent up, which is a historical high, um, you know, this year. Um and effect more 
these things actually affect more on personal life than really the stock market, right? In reality, we all know that. Stock market is more reactive to the news, but these things are really affecting people's lives. So I really hope government, right, doesn't matter US, wherever, will really get together and focus on these things. Because um, in Europe and in China, northern area, and probably in US, you know, coming now, you know, getting really cold. And really, I mean, you really need the energy to have the power fields going to stay warm, right? We are not in 30, 40 years ago, you're talking about people don't, you know, trying to get the match, trying to get some wood and then put a fire to stay warm. I mean, we, if it is, oh, we, we actually step back, right? We're in a high technological area. Well, of course, technology cannot save, <laughs> you know, power at this point, but you have influences on the way how this can be delivered. So I'm still hoping that, you know, again, um, the terrorist talk between U.S. and China will make progress in a longer way in cooperation now. I'm using word, if not partnership. So originally the word used alliance, right? Now it's then the next, you know, video, last video, you hear partnership, the word. Now I'm just talking about cooperation because a minimal, that is the effort that is needed to help each other to drive the price going down. Right now, I mean, the inflation, everybody's seen that, right? So to me, the quicker solution if you don't want to do asset tape and fine, then just talk to China or whoever supplier drive down the prices, right? What can you do with that tariffs or some policies that you can do, right? I mean, that's why we, we vote these people to sitting in the economic council, right? So I hope you will, something will be done. That actually will be good news in the market. That's why the stock market will actually still sustain even with the asset table or not. And then if you check last week, well, they were initiating the talk. So Chinese stock actually, even with Chinese market was closed, the handsome, the Hong Kong market and also the US market that about the Chinese stock actually rebound quite nicely, right? So you will have made profit of that if last week you bought some. But I was thinking, again, 20% rule. So if you gone up quite a bit, you, you want to take the short term profit because I know Chinese stock in particular quite <laughs> they are even more higher volatility, right? They're, today you see up Monday maybe up with you know the holiday you know just finished and people are still happy with the news and think the proper Chinese property evergreen was you know make it will be reaching out the deal and and the Chinese government will help pushing in with more excess cash, then the market was still going up, but but then you never know if the market, you know, if the news flip, then you will go the other way. So something to bear in mind, you know, how much you have to have a target. And then if you go up, then you may want to profit, right? And then, um, you know, my opinion again is just to step aside the political different wheels and focus on improving the global economies. I mean, I know you hear the news that a lot of news say life is wonderful. And I mean, they, they don't even reporting on a hardship, the media not even reporting or people not interested in hearing that. So that a lot less compared to, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, because I know people were saying they don't have money, they don't, they lost their job. So government helps out, please, right? And so why not we're in the economy, recovery phases, and, and some people argue we're already back to opening the economic and back to normal. So um, so I just want people to be aware of that. And, 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 and if everybody were doing their part and helps out, the economy, the world will be a better place to live, right? Uh, so sometimes it's not just money. It's also have a lot of other, other external, you know, other emotional commotions and support that needed rather than money to make the world better. So I hope that there may be also policy emergency measures as well because this is a global problem about energy and power power problem to encounter the surging prices and uh, potentially, you know, th there will be outages, right? China apparently trying to buy gold or some coal or something to continue to make it because they already cut down a little bit of the, um, you know, of the power, then the factory actually start laying behind again, which imp which then influences the supply chain again, right? Local Locally, also internationally. There may still a few days to take advantage from the market. The way I see it, even futures now showing negative, but very slight negative, the big one. Uh, this is not a, you know, really have to wait till the Asia market open or the Euro market start trading. We'll see much better insights about the futures that were better representation. 
but uh, I, that's why I'm not too concerned about a slight negative or maybe potential rebounding. So it's really difficult to say if the market will crash until large corporations start to report earning investor in reactions to them. Uh, and I said previously, EV sector about to report earnings, so it may be an opportunity to take profit in the short term. With the advantage of chip shortages, they probably report better than where they are at, but they may actually lower their outlook though, so I'm not sure where the news could be mixed. <laughs> so hopefully, it's still seeing positive, there was still momentum buying it, was still going up. Leisure entertainment stock, again, I still believe it was set up to be higher, even though I see some setback on the, um, the for the crew CCL and NCLH this week. Um, I will still be depositioning some of the growth high test stocks, so I have AI. FROG already get rid of, um, you know, FSLY, I still have some on, on my hand back. So those the stock I will probably think once, you know, if the yield curve push by a little bit, we're driving them go up a little, I'll probably will, will let them go, even though I may lose money on that, on those stocks. Because if you talk about market crash, what are the stocks that get mostly impacted, right? That is something to think about. And then the stock I have in a different stat that I'll be still holding them until probably next year. And the Chinese stock will hold it. Unless in November 11, like I said, the stock Pindoro starting to jump 40%, then I will take a profit taking on that. But I slowly keep buying more Pindoro. And again, the lowest is 75 last month uh, at one point. Uh, they're slowly jumping back up and you varies between 90 to $100 range right now. And I do hope that you will got you know, this year, uh, we'll hit them back to $120. That's 20% more high than where the current level is. And lastly, you may be aware of the WhatsApp outage last week. So JB Morgan will commend Facebook after the visual bullet leak and start slump. The firm anticipates share of the social media giant this way as much as 35%, which is over $400. Uh, additionally, if um, Facebook continue to call for a set of more standard rules for an internet from Congress, though we do not expect that near term, the ban said. It is possible, however, that Facebook could continue to tweet its algorithms to improve the platform as it did a few years ago and shift them more to a friendly friends and family. Facebook will be releasing their earnings on October 25th. So if they come up with a really quick earnings again, even though remember last year there was some campaign in boy, boycotting them or so ever, the stock actually went up high. I I was kind of surprised, but hey, they are really making money. So when I may have to reconsider, we look at the Facebook, you know, and think through it and see, hey, if this is really a good stock to buy, I may do some stock valuation on Facebook. Uh, to evaluate them where they add with the profit and projection. So I would be making a video share you with that. Hope you will have a wonderful weekend. Any questions, drop me a line, give me a like, and hope uh, next week will be continue to be a good week to make money.